Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. If this is your first time here, I'm Jody and you're late, but I'll forgive you if you subscribe to the channel by hitting the big button that says subscribe on it. Now, if you're a watch nerd like me, and let's face it, if you've clicked on this video after viewing the title and the thumbnail, then you are a watch nerd. I'm sure you found yourself on more than one occasion, pausing a DVD or peering intently at a movie screen, trying to identify the watch on the wrist of the character in the film that you're watching. It's become a bit of sport almost in the community. There are several websites dedicated to identifying watches on the wrists of characters in TV series and particularly in movies. Now, there are obviously iconic watches clearly identifiable with iconic movies. The Seiko 6105 on Martin Sheen's wrist in Apocalypse Now, for example, Steve McQueen's Tag Heuer Monaco in Le Mans, Sean Connery's Submariners in the early Bond movies, Daniel Craig's Omegas in the more recent Bond movies. Anything made by Sylvester Stallone usually has him wearing a massive Panerai in it. And there's even the occasional quite odd tie-in, for example, Benedict Cumberbatch's GLC in Doctor Strange I was never convinced that that one went with the suit. Now, these watches are all well and good, but if you want a little bit of that Hollywood glamour and cachet on your wrist, there's a big hefty price tag attached, often thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars. What about us budget watch guys and girls? Surely we can get a little bit of Hollywood on our wrist for less. Yes, we can. Today, it's my top 10 budget watches in the movies with prices starting from 20 US dollars. Let's get on with it. Okay, at number one, it's one of my favorite watches on the list. One of my favorite watches, full stop. And one that I reckon a lot of you will either own or will have perhaps owned in the past at some point. From 1994's big budget blockbuster, Speed, it is Keanu Reeves's Casio DW5600, the classic square G-Shock. The movie was a massive hit. It made $350 million from a budget of only $30 million, and it featured a young Keanu Reeves prominently wearing the DW5600 throughout, usually while pointing a gun at someone in a menacing fashion or when underneath a bus tinkering with a bomb. Now, these are currently still available virtually unchanged since the early 1980s and certainly since the mid 1990s when Speed came out, you can buy one for around 45 US dollars. I reckon that is a classic piece of design. I reckon the Square G is as iconic as anything else in the world of horology, giving us budget conscious watch guys and girls a chance to own a true icon for less than $50. Now the movie reference therefore is a somewhat incidental. It doesn't come to define the watch like some of the other watches that I am going to continue to feature on this list. If you prefer your movie references with a little less bang bang, literally, Steve Carell's character in The 40-Year-Old Virgin also wore the same watch, though I'm sure that status was not thanks to his choice of timepiece. Sticking with 90s action movies and with Casio for the moment, entry number two is one of the ugliest watches I have ever reviewed on the channel. And it's therefore a fairly unlikely movie star. It is the Casio DW290 as worn by none other than the couch jumping, feet and loving Hollywood A-lister Tom Cruise in 1996's Mission Impossible. Now I have watched my last Tom Cruise movie, Tom. This does not count as acting, all right? But I will give him props for taking one for the team and wearing the DW90 on his wrist in Mission Impossible. That is a watch not even a mother could love. Yours though, for a mere 37 US dollars, if you're brave enough and you can tell all your friends that it's just like the one Tom wore. Leaving Casio for now, though I'll be back. Did you like that segue? It's the first Seiko on today's list, and it is, of course, the Arnie. Now, the governator wore a Seiko Annie Digi on his wrist in a number of classic action films from the 1980s. I remember on a Saturday night in my youth, there was nothing I enjoyed more than settling into two hours of Mr. Schwarzenegger's cheesy one-liners and some controlled explosions. The original Arnie, or rather Arnie's, I think he wore a couple of different watches. I believe the H. 558 and H601 featured in a number of movies, including Commando, Raw Deal, Running Man, and probably my favorite Arnie movie, Predator, the classic Predator. Now, these watches, the originals from the 80s, are still available in reasonable numbers on eBay. They sold in reasonable numbers at the time, but Seiko never won to miss out on an opportunity to squeeze more money out of their loyal fan base, 
reissued the Seiko Arni in a slightly larger case shape a couple of years ago. You should be able to pick one of these up and put it on your wrist for well under 500 US dollars. Now, I reviewed one earlier on this year and it was indeed a whopper at 48 millimeters, but it never really felt like that big a watch when it was on my wrist. Seiko performed the usual magic trick of making a big watch feel small, but having a short, compact lug to lug. Be warned though, when you wear this watch, there is an expectation that the watch matches your muscles. I haven't bought one. So it's two for the price of one at number four and the watch or rather the watches that inspired my decision to make this video this week. The Hamilton Interstellars or more specifically the Coupe and the Murph. The older Coupe, the khaki pilot day date as worn by Matthew McConaughey's character, Cooper in Christopher Nolan's 2014 sci-fi epic. Now this watch I unboxed last weekend, it was previously known just as the Interstellar, but much to the surprise and delight of fans of the movie and fans of the brand, Hamilton released a version of the Murph, the watch worn by Cooper's daughter in the film played by Jessica Chastain last year. The Murph was not previously available for purchase having been designed specifically for the movie in the Hamilton style and it was an integral plot device of the film. But Hamilton never won to miss an opportunity to squeeze more money out of their fan base. Does this sound familiar to you? They released the Murph last year. These watches aren't the cheapest on the list today. The Murph can be had for around 750, the Cooper for the slightly more reasonable 625. Both still a damn sight cheaper though than your average Bond tie-in Omega or Rolex or IWC or Panerai. Okay, on to arguably the most left field watch of the group from arguably the most left field film of the group, none other than the venerable Vostok Amphibia. Who knew the Amphibia was a movie star? But it did feature prominently on the wrist of none other than the legendary Bill Murray in Wes Anderson's 2004 cult classic, A Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou. Zizou, played by Murray, was a kind of crap Jacques Cousteau, a failed ocean explorer. So rather than wear a Blancpain 50 Fathoms like Cousteau, he wore a 420 case Vostok Amphibia. Several other cast members also wore Vostoks. They appear to have been standard issue aboard his craft, the Bellafonte. Now, there is some debate as to whether he wore the blue dialed 420374 or the black dial 420526 in the movie. It's most likely to have been the black dial though. Meranom, the official factory shop of Vostok, even sell the black dial version as the Zizou. It's available on their website for less than 75 US dollars. Zizou wore it on a rubber strap in the film. Quite clearly, you can see that. He may have been a crap explorer, but even he knew that Vostok standard stainless steel bracelets are abysmal and had the foresight to put it on a rubber strap. If you're keen to pick up one of these, I highly recommend the Vostok mesh. They're very well priced and very well made. Another classic design that I love, the Vostok Amphibia. It's hard as nails, it's cheap, it's modifiable, and it will not require a service for a decade. 10 year service intervals on these movements. The 420 case specifically is a little bit smaller than average. Great for guys who have wrists that are a little bit smaller than average. I have to admit, I only watched the film because of the Vostok connection and I didn't make it beyond the halfway point. Perhaps I needed to have drunk or smoked a little bit more to get on that one's wavelength, but it makes today's list nonetheless. At number six is another film that I'm unlikely to have watched had it not been for the horological connection. Robert Redford's 2013 movie, All Is Lost, which documented Robert's battle to survive in open water after the hull of his yacht is damaged and it starts taking in water and ultimately sinking. Now, his watch of choice, his Seiko SKX-175, essentially the USA version of the 009, the two watches are identical, features prominently throughout, which was his constant companion during the movie. Perhaps not quite a plot device like some other films that mentioned here, but it is featured regularly, so regularly that some have described it as his co-star. Personally, I thought that label and potentially an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor should have gone 
to his hairdo. Redford was well into his 70s when he made the film and yet his barnet was a full, lush, colourful crown of sheer magnificence atop his head. Setting aside exactly how much empathy the audience is supposed to feel for a millionaire retiree who damages his yacht sailing around the world, it isn't a bad film. Redford doesn't actually say a lot during the movie. It is no castaway but it's well worth watching just for the watch references, assuming that you don't suffer from motion sickness. At number seven, it's back to Casio and back to the future. I did rather signpost this one with my choice of t-shirts today. I'm sure Robert Zemeckis' 1985 classic needs very little introduction. I'm sure you're also therefore familiar with Michael J. Fox's best known and best loved character, Marty McFly, the hero of the piece. Now, Marty throughout the film wears what in 1985 was the pinnacle of wearable tech and the essence of what we all thought the future would have in store for us, a Casio calculator watch. Now, given the year of the film's production, it is likely to have been a Casio CA50. They don't make them anymore, but they make the virtually indistinguishable Casio CA53 unchanged for the last 30 odd years. You can pick these up all day long on Amazon and eBay for less than $20, making it the cheapest watch on the list today. It's quite a small watch, and let's be honest, you're not really gonna be using the features that it offers in a contemporary environment. But if you're a fan of 80s pop, culture or you're a retro grouch, there can be few bigger statements than that little rubber key Casio on your wrist. The final Seiko on today's list comes in at number eight and it features prominently on the wrist of the hero in what is arguably the best movie that I'm going to talk about today. <sighs> Controversial, I know, given some of the films that I've mentioned and the two that are yet to come. I am, of course, referring to the Seiko Guigaro designed chronograph that featured on the wrist of Ripley, Sigourney Weaver's character in 1986's Aliens. Now, there is a whole other debate for the comments section there. Do you prefer Alien or Aliens? Terminator or T2? Mad Max or Mad Max 2? Do you go for the moody, atmospheric, relatively low budget original or the all singing, all dancing, action packed, big budget extravaganzas that were those film sequels? Leave me a comment, let me know what your thoughts are there. Anyway, a lot of the characters in Aliens wore Seikos, but the one that everybody remembers and the one that everybody covets is that Guigaro designed retro futuristic chronograph worn by Ripley. Very unusual case shape with the two chrono pushers aligned at the top and bottom on the right hand side. Now the originals, you can still pick them up, but they are very expensive these days. But in a now familiar pattern, Seiko re-released these watches in a couple of different colorways a few years ago. They're not as commonplace, not as easy to find as they were when they were released, but you can still find them, especially if you go straight to the source, straight to Japan. I have been close to buying these on more than one occasions, but I'm just not sure how much wear I would get on my wrist in my collection, even as an occasional wear piece, because it is just a little bit odd. Did you buy one? Do you wear one regularly? Or did you buy one and then flip one? Again, leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts about the Seiko Guigaro. At number nine, I'm a big fan of dystopian sci-fi, a big fan of Diane Verde, and a big fan of Casio watches. So for me personally, what's not to love about Neil Blomkamp's 2015 film Chappie? Not only did it feature Yolandi Visser and Ninja, it also featured Dev Patel in the lead role as computer programmer Dion Wilson wearing a Casio DBC32, the watch that I'm wearing today. Now back in 1985 in Back to the Future, a Casio calculator watch was was a vision of the future and the ultimate in wearable tech. Fast forward 30 years and it means something quite different. These watches are basically obsolete. They're almost unusable. So to wear one makes a real statement. It says in big letters that you're a nerd that you're a geek, that you're a tech head, whatever you want to call it. As such, filmmakers deliberately give characters calculator watches if they want to emphasize that part of their character, that kind of nerdy role that these characters play in the films. And so it was with Dev Patel's computer programmer come hero in Chappie. As an added bonus, Hugh Jackman's baddie wears a Casio Pro Trek in this one as well for just a little more budget movie watch action. 
finally at number 10 it's the last watch and therefore the last movie on today's list and I'm going to cheat just a little bit I'm going to preview a watch that I've got coming in for review over the next month or six weeks or so Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is the most recent of the movies that I featured today coming out last year that being 2019 typical of recent Tarantino not a lot happened for the first two and a half hours and then there was a massive bloodbath finale now Brad Pitt's character the painfully cool aging stuntman and bodyguard Cliff Booth wore a striking gold watch on a bund strap throughout and I was not long out of the cinema before I was googling like mad trying to find out what it was didn't take me too long, people had got there before me. It was a Citizen 8110 bullhead from the early 1970s. Now the movie was actually set in the late 1960s, but, but there you go. Now you can still buy these on eBay. I think the prices pretty much doubled overnight when the movie was released. One person though took that a little bit further than I did. They didn't just Google it, they recreated it. Dave from the Detroit Mint Watch Company saw the film and was so impressed that he decided to remake the watch and he has just released a brand new gold bullhead featuring a citizen movement and a brown boon strap. These can be had for around $250. Like I said, there's one on the way from Detroit to Sydney at the moment. I hope to review it in the next six weeks or so. It should be a lot of fun. So there you have it, a top 10 list today proving that you do not have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on the latest Omega to get a little bit of Hollywood on your wrist. You can do it for 20 bucks and have a lot of fun in the process. Thanks for watching. I will see you in a future video.